With my advanced years, this next report is something I cling to like a limpet does to a rock. And it's all about how do you live longer? Yeah? And, I, say, and I, I, saw, I liken it really to trying to understand how a TV works, TV set works, by watching the programmes. Yeah, but nonetheless, that's all we have to go on. What are the habits, the lifestyles, the characteristics of people who are in their 90s? What are they doing? So if I emulate what they're doing, will I also therefore live to be in my 90s? So as I say, it's a bit like understanding TV by watching the programmes, but it's fun, in, I suppose, and let's, let's go through some of the things that they have noticed about people uh, in their 90s. One is that they seem to drink two glasses of red wine a day. That's not a bad start. They exercise for 15 minutes, and they go out a lot. They're very sociable, and they talk to strangers, which is very interesting. They also all have a hobby, and um, they also drink two cups of coffee a day. Um, they keep their weight in check, and all of these things add up to longevity, or so they think. And... Um, I think really the fundamental point, though, in all this, which has sort of been missed, because I think these are all outward representations of something more profound going on, and I think it is all about actually having a point to being alive. And, um, you know, it's so having that purpose of saying, well, will the world be a better place if I get out of bed today? You know, in whatever way that may be, it doesn't have to be a, a massive, you know, save the world type thing, but it somehow benefits somebody else in some small or large way. So your very being has a purpose to it. And I think, actually, that's the core. And all the other things that we do, I'm sure, all contribute a bit, but they be, may be manifestations of someone who is actually engaged in the world. Well, I, I'm always fascinated when I talk to healthcare practitioners in places like California, and they say that their waiting rooms are filled with very healthy patients who are really unhealthy, who do all the right things. They do diet and they're exercising to death, et cetera, et cetera. But something is wrong in their life. Something lacks purpose, yeah. lacks focus, and I would argue lacks looking outward. I mean, one of the things I'm really fascinated about are studies of uh, altruism and what happens to people and their biology with altruism. And altruism is amazingly like a bulletproof vest. I mean, you look at studies of altruism and you find when you do anything for someone else, you're outward looking, whether it's just taking out their trash, your neighbor's trash, those people are healthier, happier, and live longer in every regard. And I'm, you know, I'm thinking about one of the most fascinating studies that I've ever found, which was of two groups of people. One were people who were living the good life. They had loads of money. They were on lots of holidays. They were just, you know, living the American dream. And when researchers looked at their immune systems, they found that they were terrible. These guys were perfect candidates for heart attacks, you know, dementia, diabetes, the whole lot. Then they looked at another group, which weren't as affluent, but were living a life of service. They were doing for other people. And these guys had immune systems that were rock solid. These people were going to live forever. And I think that really kind of sums it up. It's all about community and being outward looking. And as you say, <clears throat> having a purpose, having a reason to get up in the morning and staying curious, that looking, there's been studies of people who live to 100 and over and over again, that's one of the key points too, is curiosity, maintaining mm -hmm. a sense of curiosity, of mm -hmm. purpose, and as I say, of connecting with other people. That's probably number one. Mm. Well, I'll see you the other side of 100, kid. <laughs> um, that's about it for this week. Thank you again for listening. I'm uh, Brian Hubbard. Check us out on the, our website, buy our magazine, subscribe to our magazine even. And uh, if, by the way, you do hear some occasional noises, because we're not in a soundproof booth, we're actually doing it in our offices, WDDTYHQ. 
the <laughs> pulsing heart of all that we do. So it does mean there's occasionally a noise going on. So I hope you don't mind that. But thank you very much for listening. And we look forward to talking with you again soon. As I say, I'm Brian Hubbard. And I'm Lynn McTaggart. Thanks for listening. We'll be in touch soon.